Uh-oh, it's this sheet again. But don't worry about building up lots of knowledge now to understand the assessment process. And this is starting to prime you ready as we're coming to the end of this first module and into the second module as teachers you're looking at your types of evidence that you're going to start to gather for your own recognised prior learning of the delivery module because as teachers you deliver every day. But as you're thinking about the evidence you're going to start to collect for me, we need to look further at the rules of evidence. So we need to make sure that the evidence that you present is current. When this course was advertised, it was specific that it was currently registered teachers. So if you are currently working as a teacher, it's not that you have your teacher's qualifications from 20 years ago, that you are in the workforce, that you have your current uh, QCT registration or registration from New South Wales, Western Australia or the other states. That means that as part of that registration, for you to maintain your registration, you're undergoing stringent um, assessment and self-reflection and presenting evidence of professional development. If you're not competent as a teacher, if you're not competent in your delivery, then you know you probably wouldn't currently be employed. So we consider that piece of evidence very strong. That's why we're talking about currency. Um, and you have industry currency as far as the delivery goes. You don't have industry currency in the VET sector and that is why you're doing gap training in the design and the assessment modules and there will be a little bit of gap training in some VET specific aspects of the delivery module as well. So that hopefully explains currency for you. So the evidence that you're presenting is largely going to be your current teacher's registration. We will, to make sure that it's authentic, we will need to cite your driver's licence um, and a copy of your birth certificate. So if you can have uh, a, a JP actually sign off on your driver's licence that and verify that it's an authentic copy stamp your teacher's registration and stamp your birth certificate, the fact that a JP has cited that, we will consider that authentic evidence. So um, that's one part of that RPL process and that also is something that we would gather anyway, at least the driver's licence and birth certificate um, as, a, as a part of the enrolment process for people not getting an RPL. So we've covered currency, we're now up to this sense, an idea of something, that it's, something that's valid. I want to turn quickly now to the principles of assessment and this is what you have to think about as you're gathering your evidence. You need to make sure that the evidence meets the requirements of the unit of competency and that is the focus of this YouTube clip now. Uh, you want to make sure that it's at the right AQF level. We've discussed this a few times. You've got the IBSA documentation around what's expected at a Certificate 4 level. So let's just focus now very deeply on mapping your evidence and planning the evidence. And we're going to do that through the case study of Susan as we look at her RPL for one of the units of competency which is the um, make a presentation. So first things first, I need to be making sure that you know where to go to uh, access any of the units because you won't just be teaching uh, training and assessment, you'll have your own industry specialisation. So you need to be making sure that you're constantly referring to the benchmarks, so the requirements of your units of competency that you're delivering. So just a quick bit of revision, we type into a URL bar www.training.gov.au we get to the home page and swing down to the bottom right hand corner. We deselect the superseded data and we enter the title code. So the title for this elective, and this is one, even though we're running it as part of your evidence, as mapping 
evidence for Susan's RPL in one unit. This is a unit that I would expect as a teacher you would be um, getting an RPL in as well. So as we work through Susan, think about it from your own perspective as well. So the unit is BSB CMM 401A, that's the code. It isn't case sensitive. And it's make a presentation. I did deselect it, but I'm checking again. It is current, so we're not looking at a superseded, out of date version. And just close that off there. We can open up, now we always open up a Word document. So even if you finish this course and you are purchasing uh, training resources and assessment tools um, to teach your course in, you will still need to keep handy your own copy of a current unit or units that you're teaching to your qualification. So we just open up always a Word document because these are the ones that you can map within. Here we are. So if we look at this, we need to look at all of the components. This is revision, but it's very essential revision. When we're looking at sufficiency, we need to make sure that you'll be able to consistently perform the required task. Here I'm showing you a couple of different times. I need to know that after you're certified, you know to go to training.gov.au. You know how to ensure that it's a current version of the unit. And now we're getting deeper how to map the, the, um, the different pieces of evidence and how to link within those components. So the first thing we look at is excuse me for scrolling, the unit descriptor. So we'll see here, we're looking at, this is just any presentation, this unit. It's one of the electives, so it is not specific to the VET sector. This is not a training package that you're presenting, unlike the core units in their unit descriptors. Anybody could look at getting some uh, recognised prior learning for make a presentation. If they've ever delivered training in the workplace or any type of training that, um, you know, interests them. So we'll move down. We next have the elements and performance criterion. So this is where I'm going to show you another little IT skill, which is handy. And as I said, you may have purchased assessment tools where all of this is done, but I'm just making sure that you've got a skill base in case you have to do some mapping. This is probably more at a diploma level though. So I would be expecting that you would be purchasing or your R your RTO would have these already available for you. This is more for interest. So we need to create a new column, but before we do that, we're going to set it to landscape view. We're currently in um, portrait view. So we're just going to move our cursor to the point that we want it to turn to landscape. And on my version of Word, I would go to page layout, breaks, continuous section break. So if you set a section break, it will allow just this section to have its orientation change. So I'm going to change that orientation to landscape. and We've got more room to work. Now just tidy it up now and zip down to the end of that performance criterion. That's finished now and we're up to the evidence guide. So I will reset another section break continuous. We don't want to pop down and use blank space by hitting it to next page. So we go continuous and we'll change that orientation back to portrait. Okay, there's a handy little trick. So coming up here now, excuse the scrolling, we have lots more room to work with. So we'll put our little cursor on the last um, end of the first cell. We want to create a column to the right. So you right click, insert, column to the right. That's a pretty big column, so I'm just going to minimize that up a little bit there. Actually, let me just expand this one a little. And then if you select the last cell at the end, 
right click insert columns to the right it'll make it the exact same size insert columns to the right there we go so we have a few extra columns there that we can work with and this is where we're going to start mapping our evidence the other little clever trick that I can show you is you can go to insert table and draw table what this will allow you to do now is to separate each of these performance criterion I'm just left clicking and holding dragging across and releasing that left button when I want the line to end. So I could do this for the next five minutes but you get the idea of the skill. The final step in that once you've drawn the tables there, I'll just remove that draw table function off, is you then on the top cells can right click, text direction and change the direction of that text. So I'm just changing it to move perpendicular to the, the standard there. I can now choose, remember we said observation was the strongest form of evidence? We can look at observation. We can look at questions because we know that that's a strong way to determine the knowledge and remember it's knowledge, skills and attitude which forms what's deemed as competent. Here we're going to put products. So that could be a range of product. Anything can really be captured in here, your third party reports, your, your work samples. Um, I'm even going to put in there things like the qualifications. So this is where a more experienced trainer and assessor would be determining what they're going to name these cells, how they're going to group these forms of assessment methods and how they would transfer that over into an assessment report as part of an assessment report as a plan. But really that's, that's just a, a very simple way to be gathering evidence and you'll see later on when we're looking at assessment reports how we're listing, you know, whether they're direct or indirect questions, what types of products are going to be ticked off in this column. Oh, one other quick little trick. If you want to make a tick appear, because there's a lot of ticking, as you know, as, a, as an assessor, you would select all of the cells, go to home, go to a little font called Wingdings 2. Wingdings 2. I'm also going to set that to centre. Now if you've got the font set to Wingdings 2 and you hit the caps lock button on your keypad and then hit the P, it actually makes a tick. You might really want to rewind this and play these to, to pick up these IT skills. So now you've got some IT skills around that. I'm going to leave that alone for a minute and return back to our submission piece. I've already uploaded and, and made some of these modifications to the Make a Presentation unit. Okay, you'll see where I've highlighted in the unit descriptor and you know then the context. So it's any presentation that's occurred. All right, it doesn't have to be VET related as a presentation. It doesn't mean that you're giving evidence of VET training packages that you've presented. That means that you would be able to use your school presentations. Now, I have created some categories here for Susan's case study. Let me just minimize this a little. Okay. So because this is an RPL and you can design it however you like so long as you're mapping and showing your evidence. So I've given a, a column for her qualification, her teacher's qualification, um, her teacher's registration so we can see that she's current. Um, I've given a product one in case we want her to submit any product because we're looking at the evidence as a whole 
if, especially if some of the evidence isn't strong. And, you know, here's one for third party report. So let's have a look as we work through Susan. Now, I've made my little sections here and because it's an electronic document you do also have the option to type in some in extra information. So I'm happy as a supervising assessor that if Susan gives me a copy of her qualification, a copy of her teacher's registration, that she's provided a copy of a JP authorised birth certificate driver's licence um, copy of her registration signed off by the GP and her teacher's registration. So far, I can see that that's authentically hers. And they're two very strong pieces of evidence. That's going to, in my mind, meet under this unit, which isn't to do with VET-related training, be able to automatically give her recognised prior learning. Now, we work through each part of the performance criteria in the steps to prepare a presentation, which is the element. So number two, choose presentation strategies, format and delivery methods that match the characteristics of the target audience, location, resources and personnel needed. Now, that's a mouthful. You'll notice here that there's some bold text that's italicized and one of the other components within a unit is a range statement. So if we just fling down here, you'll see this range statement here. So depending on the context, the range statement gives some definitions of ways that you can apply this concept, the bold italicized word and phrases, depending on the context. So you'll see here presentation strategies may involve. So whenever it has the word may, that means it could be any of those. It doesn't have to be all of them. If it said must involve, you would have to ensure that every dot point of that range statement is included. So a great way when you're starting to map and, and link the relationships, you would just highlight all of that Right click copy, hit your page up and just paste it where you found it. Ooh, having a little trouble with my scrolling here. Alright, so there's your presentation st strategy. So here I'm just going to put in R for range and then I'm going to paste what presentation strategies are. Okay, let me just quickly finish that off. Format and delivery methods and then characteristics. So I would go down because you're going to be finishing this so it's important for you to understand this process. Go down to the range statement. There we are, there's format and delivery methods may include, so it doesn't have to be any or all of these, but it may include. Right click copy and we can paste it in here again. Range statement. Now, that match the characteristics of the target audience. So let's see what they mean by characteristics. Hitting my page down button on the keyboard, back down to range statement. Characteristics may include age, physical ability. See, we're not just dealing with school students here, we're dealing with adult learners essentially. So, you know, there is a vast difference between your Gen X, slightly IT literate person and your baby boomer who might be struggling or perhaps because they're reaching retirement has shown an interest in IT. But their IT capabilities 
might be vastly different to your Gen I, the ones that are currently going through high school that just whip and, you know, gosh, you, you can learn so, so much as a teacher as far as IT goes just from looking over a student's shoulder and uh, just getting them to slow down long enough to show you the key steps there. So we're going to copy that. Obviously, I'm not Gen I. Gen X, actually. We'll pop that down there. So characteristics refer to their capabilities. So we've got age, cultural and language background. So there could be some language literacy and numeracy issues that you would have to modify your training for. So all of that is a range of what it may include and look like. So now that we have that information, we just go back up to it and read that big long-winded blurb again in the performance criterion. Choose presentation strategies, any of these. Format and delivery methods, which may include any of these, that match the characteristics, which might be that didn't paste any of these. Heavens above. Of the target audience. Okay, it also has to match the location, resources, and personnel that's needed. Okay, so look, as a school teacher, you would be differentiating all the time. That's the term that we use within a K to 12 environment. So, um, so I'm going to tick off that Susan's qualification and teacher registration, the fact that she's currently a teacher, she's presenting, she's differentiating, she might suddenly have a timetable change and have to move to the music room, but she's got a science lesson and, and you just have to... Um, change your strategies and your delivery methods according to your resources. So here we go. We've got the first two performance criterion where we're accepting both those. And, you know, you might actually want to put, um, instead of third party report, you might actually want to put questions for that actually. Because there might be an opportunity to consider the evidence as a whole and ask Susan some questions as well, just to check her knowledge of that. My suggestion for number two would be, you know, and you would contextualise it for it. So say Susan was a science teacher in high school, you could turn around and say, okay, you're scheduled to have a chemistry lesson today, but there's been a room change to the music room. Um, what changes would you make to your delivery methods? and then you'd find out what information she gives you for that. Because you're the expert in your training and assessment area, you are, you know, you're, you're empowered to be able to deem whether her response is satisfactory or not and perhaps take, perhaps take some notes on that. You might email her those questions as part of her RPL and then you have written questions and a record of responses. Uh, you've seen how we use the written questions and the simplified multiple choice format which makes it a lovely, quick, very easily benchmarked you know, it's either right or it's wrong. So, so you know, you've got quite ease of use there with that form of questioning. But in an RPL, it really is going to be more direct questions asked from an expert and you would be taking notes on that. You might be recording your competency conversation when you're asking questions. So you might have... A, a basic template for teachers here and then as you're having your competency conversation with each teacher you might then choose to ask a question around it. You save the questions for the gaps really, any gaps. I really feel because I am a teacher and I've designed this for teachers I am quite confident that when I'm audited by ASQA or I undergo any validation with other RTOs or within my own team, I can make a decent case for saying why that's strong evidence. So see how 
see how you actually go through and link it to the range statement components. Yeah, here's some more that you'll be able to link through. Okay, and you're choosing what types of evidence. So this one says select presentation aids, materials and techniques. So perhaps you have done some professional development for other teachers. You could use any PowerPoint slides, maybe convert them to a PDF format in, in the slide view and then you could submit that as evidence. Um, that would be a great example of a work product for the presentation aids. So you don't have to do that. I'm very happy with your teacher's registration for this unit. Select techniques to evaluate presentation effectiveness. So this is your checking for understanding in, in our teacher talk. So it might be a question around that. How do you check for understanding? So let's put that question in there. It's good when you've asked a question. So what we're doing now is we're building um, some basic assessment tools. As you're asking a question within this, you're not just creating and mapping out your RPL for Susan, but you're also fulfilling the requirement to create those that basic assessment tool. So what you need to do when you have a tool, you need to offer a benchmark response. So any assessor could pick this up and be able to just decide if it's a satisfactory response or not. So I'm going to, in Evoke, we just then change the font colour to red and that's our colour code for knowing that this is the benchmark response. So, um, you know, you might want to put the range that any of the following responses, um, you might look for non-verbal cues. And you keep it just to some simple words, not full sentences, because then we're just looking for keywords in their responses. Or they might use a different term than nonverbal cues. They might actually say, oh, I'll look to see if they're frowning or if they're disengaging and, and checking their iPhones or, you know, talking to somebody. So, you know, they would be all nonverbal cues short of, I'm bored, I don't understand, which would be a verbal cue. So, yeah, there might be verbal cues. Uh, you might want to run some quick check for understanding exercises and you might know some of your activities and be able to elaborate on those if I asked you that question. So there's some benchmarks there. So we're saying if they're running any checking for understanding activities, any what we would probably call formative assessment, that they must then elaborate and explain what he the heads and shoulders game is. I run um, a quick check for understanding in my class. I get them all to stand up, close their eyes. Hands on heads means true, hands on shoulders means false. And at a glance I can see a class of 28 whether they're understanding the content by making some statements and them choosing true or false. And it's a quick visual, they can't see what anybody else is answering and it takes all of about two minutes. So. If I was doing the RPL, I'd talk about my heads and shoulders activity, but I'd have to elaborate and explain like I just have to you what that means. And then you as an assessor would be able to say, well, yeah, that's satisfactory. That's some um, techniques to evaluate um, the effectiveness of the presentation they're actually learning. That's, that's quite good. The other aspect of presentation effectiveness is, is any feedback. So you might have a question in there regarding um, how you seek feedback. So the question would be in black text. How do you seek feedback that your delivery has, is effective? Okay, so that might be where you're um, explicitly asking them, um, would you like me to repeat that again? I don't have to do that in the YouTubes because you guys just get to pause it and rewind it 
And failing that, of course, you can give me a, a phone call or wait to the webcast and give me a list of your questions. So, um, yeah, this, this is a little bit advantageous that way. But you wouldn't in a presentation situation say, do you understand that? Because no one wants to own up or, or feel that they're not capable in any way. So you, you, you make it about you. Am, am I explaining that clearly? Would you like me just to repeat that or, or say that in a different way? And that's when people are more inclined to raise their hand. So, you know, how do you seek feedback that your delivery is effective? You would put a benchmark response. to the effect of, which means it doesn't have to be these exact words. Would you like me to explain that again? Okay, so there's two questions there that just gives us a strong idea that you know how to meet that performance criterion. As I said, you have a, a bank then of questions um, and you know, you're gauging as you go. I mean, if, if I've got a teacher I'm, I'm not really going to be dwelling on a lot of these um, competency questions, but I would throw a couple of random ones in just to make absolutely sure that, you know, that we're on track and, and that we're meeting the requirements, you know. So that's an idea for you. You can actually go through now with this form. I'll save it up to that point for you, okay, and that'll help model for you. You can rewind this YouTube and replay it if you like. Um, but I'd like you to fill in some of the questions and if you've added a question, you then just have to make sure that you've ticked that. Now remember this is set to the wingdings. See how it says wingdings too? So to create a tick, all you have to do is put the cursor in that cell, make sure your caps lock button is on and you hit the P key. Say that again. Make sure your caps lock button is on and hit the P key. See how the caps lock isn't on there? There we are. Okay, once you've completed that, you can just hit save. And that will save that embedded document with your improvements to it. So I'm looking for some questions that you can list in there. I'm looking for all of the range statement information coming through. And finally, 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 after we've done those elements and performance criterion, we won't at this Certificate 4 stage map through and identify where the skills occur in the performance criterion and knowledge. I'll just give you a sample of that of one of mine. We just do need you to know that you can appreciate the critical aspects. Okay, so one of the other components here is the evidence guide. And we can see that one of the first things in the evidence guide is the critical aspects for assessment. This is what you must make sure that you've done to meet the requirements of the unit. This is making sure that it's valid. So the evidence of the following is essential. Preparation, delivery and evaluation of the effectiveness of, so all of that's just blah, blah. The key part is two presentations relating to the candidate's occupation or area of interest. So we won't limit it to your teaching occupation. Uh, there'll be some people that won't be teachers that are completing this RPL who have done at least two presentations. So hopefully you've got copies of some old PowerPoints that you've created. And when I say old, we have to consider the excuse me, the currency of it. So ideally within the last three to five years um, to, to show some currency there. If it's in IT, currency could mean somewhere within the past six months because the procedures in IT, you know, software, hardware is just improving and changing at such a rapid pace. So the other thing that we need to make sure 
is that you have the knowledge of, princ of the principles of effective communication. So that's where if you're looking at some questions, think about it from making sure that they know how it's effective to communicate. Look at some of those performance criteria around effective communication. So that could occur here in the deliverer presentation. Here we go, 2.4. Use persuasive communication techniques to secure an audience's interest. So here we are, what are three effective communication techniques you could employ? And it's benchmarked for you here. You know, positive feedback, listening, body language, that's effective communication. So what I need you to do is to come across and tick that. See the question there? And we've got our question column here. Question, yeah? So we need to make sure that you've ticked off and mapped that. So there's one that we've made sure we've met the critical aspects for. So throw in a couple of questions in there. All of the qualification and teacher registration boxes are ticked. You might want their PowerPoint product in a couple of them. It's totally up to you. I'm happy enough with those two pieces of evidence and a couple of questions I'll ask in a competency conversation, which as teachers you'll have no problem answering. So just, just have a bit of a play with that, get used to that and enjoy. Good luck.